We have evidence of fossils in South Africa, hence we'll be looking at key events in South Africa. One of the oldest evidence of life on Earth, when we want to look back at how life originated, one of the oldest evidence that life originated in how we interpret it in the theory of evolution was found in Barberton, somewhere in Pumalanga. And these were fossilized photosynthetic bacteria cells. Remember, we had photosynthetic bacteria cells that produce oxygen before it accumulated and then led to the uh, Cambrian explosion, where we had arrows now been, uh, evolving all the animals that came after that Cambrian explosion. These fossils are estimated to be about three or 3,400 million years old. And the bacteria that were then found had some kind of jelly-like substance around them, around their cells. And these jelly-like substances were sticky such that rock particles became attached to them. And since the rock particles became attached to them, somehow the bacteria within the jelly-like substance and surrounded by the rock particles were now darkened from the sunlight. It means they were in the shade because of these rocks that formed that kept cast a shadow around them. And since they are photosynthetic bacteria, it means they will always need light for photosynthesis. Being in the shade, they were then forced to grow upward, upward so that they could reach out in search for light, so that they could get light for photosynthesis. As a result of trying to push upwards, pushing upwards, they then formed, they were pushing upwards against those rocks, to push out those layers of rocks around them. And they were opening up those rocks. As a result, they formed structures that we can we refer to as strolites, that we'll see how they look like on the next page. Okay, these are the stromatolites we can see here. This is just one that we've identified here. There's a whole stack of them here. They look kind of dome-shaped, like matte, dome-shaped matte-like layers of rock because we're being pushed upward so that the bacteria can move out to get exposure to the sun and use it for photosynthesis. Now, remember, we have been talking about the oldest fossil of bacteria, and bacteria are unicellular organisms. Now we are looking at the oldest fossil of multicellular organisms. And these oldest fossils were found in Namibia. And the fossils of the multicellular organisms that were found were those of sponges of the phylum Porifera called Otavia. This was surely given by the people who found it or the local people. These sponges were found in limestone rock precisely in northern Namibia and are thought to be about 650 million years old. We can find similar fossils of soft bodies just like the sponges in the northern Cape here in South Africa. Again, here in South Africa, fossils of algae and early land plants. We could be looking at uh, the moss, for example, the bryophytes. So the fossils of early land plants, including those of algae, have been found in Eastern Cape, near Grahamstown. These fossils are thought to be about 350 million years old. And similarly, nearly about 280 million old, 8 million year old fossils of cone-bearing plants, probably like the cycads and, and pine trees, have been found near Moy River. Okay, I'm sure you've seen the, the, the milk, or is it butter, That's, that has the brand Moy River. So fossils have been found around there, and as caught in KwaZulu-Natal. You can see here a, a, a picture of the Glossa Petris fossil we have it here. You'll see here a picture or drawings of what we could refer to as the Glossopteris. 
The Glossopteris are among those early land plants together with the mosses that formed. So this is what their fossil could look like. That doesn't exactly mean that this is exactly how they look like. These are just pictures drawn from reconstructions of fossils that were found. Now, these Glossopteris occupied most of Gondwana land. Remember, the earth from the, from, from the huge mass of land that we used to be called Pangaea divided into two. In the Northern Hemisphere, we had Laurasia, and then in the Southern Hemisphere, where we have South Africa, for example, or Africa as a whole, we had Gondwana land. So these Glossopteris were mostly found in the Southern Hemisphere, countries or continents of the Southern Hemisphere, like Africa. And they were present there for almost 60 million years. And they are actually responsible for most of the coal that we find in Southern Africa. It means that the coal that we mine and dig out are as a result of the fossilization of these plants. Under high pressure, they were converted to form coal. Like I said earlier, the picture is simply just a reconstruction of what they may have looked like. Not exactly, could not exactly tell us what, how they look like. So we have a map here that shows the coal deposits in South Africa as part of Gondwana land or as part of the Southern Hemisphere. Other evidence of fossils in Southern Africa included fossils from the kingdom Animalia. We've been talking about the plant kingdom so far. So we have here fossils of reptiles. And these two reptiles, the Lystrosaurus and Trinaxodon, are believed to be the ancestors or have believed, are believed to have given rise to the mammals. And based on their fossil records, they are believed to have lived between 280 and 100 million years ago. Dinosaurs are believed to have lived about 210 million years ago. And that was basically in Lesotho, northern eastern free state, KwaZulu Natal, and the northern, the northeastern part of Eastern Cape. And this is supported by the fact that fossilized footprints of dinosaurs of dinosaurs were found in these areas. As well, fossilized bones of dinosaurs have also been found in Maluti and Drakensberg mountain ranges. Okay, that led to the assumption or conclusion that dinosaurs are found in all these areas. For example, here we have a dinosaur, Euskelosaurus, which was an early dinosaur and was a herbivore, mainly fed on grass or vegetation. The first fossils of the skull of this dinosaur and skeleton were found in Lady Brand in the Eastern Free State. There's also evidence of early mammal existence in Southern Africa. There is the example of a shrew-sized mammal. It's just a small animal that looks more or less like a mouse with a much pointy mouth and mostly insectivorous, means it feeds mostly on insects. It was found in the Eastern Cape Province and Lesotho. Also, the caves of the cradle of humankind contain most fossil evidence of early humans. It means if you go inside those caves, you could easily find remnants, bones or fossils of these early humans. You could find also artifacts like jewelry. You could find tools, for example, in these caves that were used by early humans and their existence can also be found in the free state kwazulu natal and eastern cape so the evidence are in the form of fossils like i said their bones and artifacts tools jewelry cutlery etc solacans a species of previously thought extinct fish forms another key evidence of fossils that was found in southern africa this here on the right is a diagram of a solacant, and they were thought to have been extinct about 70 million years ago. That's what was previously thought until they were rediscovered in 1938. That was very, very recently, just maybe decades ago. 
and was got one of them was got around the coast of east london and so far up to about a population of about 15 solar cans have been found near sodwana bay now the solar cans have fins some of their fins are mostly shaped in form of lobes they have lobe like fins and those lobe like fins together with many other characteristic features that we find on their body lead us to believe that they are more closely related to amphibians like frogs for example rather than fish all of these make us realize today or make us come to the conclusion of calling these solar guns living fossils because they are of very very old times if you can see back here about 70 million years ago we thought they were extinct but they've been found again it means that throughout all these long ages they have not changed that much they are from prehistoric times and still found today makes us give them or call them living fossils